Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. I thought I would sneak another one in here, this time make it another Cryptids of the Week, which again follows the theme of just having the random page on the cryptids.wikia.com website giving me something to talk about. Whatever it lands on, no matter what it is, I'll talk about it here. And it was fascinating to do this one because it strictly followed the theme that I was doing this past series where I was asking for your aquatic suggestions. And this particular uh, cryptid I've never heard of before, but what makes it so fascinating is that there are no less than three or four very distinct eyewitness accounts. I mean, the, the stuff that these people gave as far as their eyewitness accounts was amazing. And I'll read to you those here in a minute so that way you can see how well these eyewitness accounts perfectly visualized their encounters. It's great stuff, great reading. So, um, as far as the creature that we're talking about, it is the Cape Sable Serpent, which you're looking at a picture of here. It's a creature of some sort, a sea serpent or a sea monster, that's found near an area called Cape Sable Island, hence its name, as this Cape Sable Serpent. The Cape Sable Islands, in turn, are found in the northern parts of, I believe it's Canada, um, towards one of the tips of Nova Scotia, and they're located there... What, um, these islands uh, near and around a whole bunch of water. So whatever this thing is, this Cape Sable Serpent, it has apparently made its home in this area in all this water. And what's interesting to note is that this area is prone to having lots of foggy mornings, afternoons, or evenings, which is what makes these encounters that I'll talk about here in a minute all the more frightening, uh, because the way they've described them in vivid detail, with the fog too, it just adds to the tense atmosphere there. So let's talk about first about the Cape Sable Serpent and what it looks like. It's supposed to be something that, based on eyewitness accounts, is about 50 feet in length. It kind of looks like your traditional sea serpent, whatever you would normally think of in the old tales of, let's say, the 1950s or 40s comics where they talk about some kind of serpent attacking a ship. Same thing, but here it's like that. It's like any other B-movie sea serpent you could think of. The big differences, though, have to do with the body itself. Uh, the people that reported seeing this, it seems to be making up like its body, its composition is, is of some very rough material. Um, people compared it to like a seahorse of sorts, where it has almost like that Godzilla-like skin which is rough um, very pop marked very rough to touch that kind of stuff uh, it also seems to have a neck a very protruding neck that extends about 10 to 15 feet long and covering that neck seems to be a whole set of barnacles uh, that stand out very much so and it seems to be that this is its camouflage which makes perfect sense because if it lives in that area of the sea and let's say it's just laying at the bottom of the sea lake here you have these barnacles covering the majority of its body it can perfectly blend in with that sea lake altogether now going to the head it also has some very distinct items uh, number one are its teeth it seems to have very large teeth protruding from its mouth even when it's closed it's that deal where it has those frightening set of jaws where um, even with its mouth closed the teeth go above and beyond the lips and we've seen those in nature um, sometimes you see like some of the fishes that are found in the bottom of the ocean they have those gigantic maws with those teeth that completely overlap its mouth same concept here but much much larger and then perhaps its most distinctive feature seems to be its eyes because according to the eyewitness reports the eyes are protruding from its head um, almost like a snail would have them they're not resting on its head in other words they are placed on two um, st two sticks or two stalks of some point and they protrude far outside its head and then the eyes look just like that which makes it much more frightening because um, it has then that ability to be able to turn its eyes and almost like a 360 degree and that way it can see all around it without having to turn its head 
so pretty creepy stuff um, so whatever this thing is wherever it's located that Cape Sable Serpent it is quite a frightening visage to see all together now here are the actual eyewitness accounts as to what people have said uh, the majority of them occurred back in the middle of, of July I'm sorry in the middle of the year 1976 we're talking about somewhere in July somewhere on July 5th or so and it happened to several people in consecutive order the first person that uh, this occurred was a Canadian a guy by the name of Eisner Penny um, he said that he was actually hunting or fishing off of the grounds there in Cape Sable Island and I don't know if this was in the morning or if this was sometime in the afternoon but here's what he described it as he said that he was there fishing when he spied some kind of mammoth creature of sorts that was slowly rising and then going back down into the water. And he thought at first that it was a whale because uh, apparently their uh, sightings of whales are not too uncommon. So to him it was just another whale and didn't pay much to attention. But he slowly did start to pay attention to it when this thing, whatever it was, started to approach his boat. And with his experience as a fisherman, him saying that he's been doing this now for over 30 years, that's unusual to him because usually anything involving like whales or anything involving other sea life, um, they don't really hang around large boats or any other type of boats altogether or uh, it, even less approach a boat so this one was and this is what he said he said it kept coming out of the water by the time it was near my boat it was a good 14 15 feet out of the water and as close as I let it it was coming up at the stern and I saw it open its mouth wide open like a like it had its maw its jaws opened 100% wide um, this spooked him out because whatever he was seeing was unlike anything um, he had ever seen before again with his years so many years of being a fisherman and so he immediately went back to shore started to tell some of his friends about his experience but unfortunately um, his friends didn't think that uh, it didn't take too kindly to what he was saying. In fact, they were joking and scoffing with him about the fact that he saw something like this. To them, uh, he might have either been just drunk from the day before, since it was July 4th previously, or maybe um, he was just making things up, but they were not taking him seriously. Now, here's the uh, fascinating part. Some of those people that were ridiculing him was a guy by the name of Keith Frost with his son, a guy who was 24 years old by the name of Rodney. Um, they later on went fishing in the same areas and they also encountered the same foggy like waters that um, seem to be there as well so uh, as far as being able to see from afar not too much but seeing things close by they could um, so the fog um, was essentially obscuring things from far away and they were there fishing and they were anchored just off a place several miles off called Pollock's Edge whenever um, the son started to see something the 24 year old he saw something stirring in the water he didn't quite recognize what it was so he called his father down Keith from wherever he was um, to try to take a look as well and at first the father Keith thought it might have been a sunfish which is like a giant type of fish of some sort um, that also seems to permeate those areas but then this thing again was nothing like is it was acting like anything else they've encountered before um, he said I've never seen nothing like it in my life it was like something out of this world a very frightful thing my son Rodney said it was like some kind of monster and then uh, the the event goes to on further where as they were staring at this thing they judged it to approximately about 50 feet in length it emerged even more so from the depths of the fog that were so that was surrounding their boat and then this time it came straight for them again pretty frightening imagine um, there you are on a boat of some sort and the entire area is surrounding you by fog but you can still see someone in a distance and then you're looking at this thing and whatever it is it's kinda of hard to tell but then all of a sudden you see that shadow of a thing coming towards you in your direction it would make for a very interesting circumstance and so here's what they said because then now they could see more and more details as it was coming closer he said it started coming at the boat and Rodney ran towards the cud it didn't hit us but it came within a couple of feet of us it had eyes as big around as saucers and bright red looking I mean you could see the red in its eyes like they were bloodshot 
It had its mouth wide open, and there were two big tusks, I call them tusks, that hang down from its upper jaw. It passed a third of us so close, and we could see its body about 40 or 50 feet long, with grayish, snake-like looking skin, full of lumps or bumps and barnacles, and it appeared to us to have a fish's tail, an up-and-down tail, not flat like a whale's. I tell you, nothing like that was ever supposed to be in those waters. The sun also gave his own... Um, account and this is what he had to say he said I never seen crocodiles other than on television but its head was sort of like that coming out of the water peaked at the top with a big my, wide mouth its neck was full of things that looked like gigantic barnacles its eyes weren't in its sockets but popped out of the side of its head and it had two tusks maybe two or three feet long and four inches or so round it was a frightening thing to see they also made the comparison of the um, skin of the creature again looking like a seahorse and that was their encounter um, and an ironic note um, being terrified of what was happening and not wanting to give this thing whatever it was a chance to get even closer to the boat they started the boat again and then they tried to go back to shore and they came across another boat and lo and behold this boat was also the boat of the guy that we were just talking about a couple of minutes back that last guy with the last name Penny he was the one that was on that boat. So now this other guy with his son was coming towards his boat. He told him about the encounter. And so now um, it was the sense that everyone, uh, th that them two that were previously ridiculing Penny, now knew exactly what Penny was talking about. And then finally there was another encounter of sorts that happened. This was a couple of nights later. Um, there was a fisherman by the name of Edgar Nickerson. Um, he was also someone that had heard the legends or the stories about this Cape Sable Serpents, but he was somebody that was not believing it. He was fishing with his son, a 15-year-old, by the guy of Ro named Robert, and they were fishing at night. And then that's when they heard what they described as something very large splashing in the fog so again it seemed to be like it was foggy uh, that time around as well and whenever they uh, they saw it they must have flashed a light or something to try to see what it was and this is what he said and he described it he said it kept coming up at first I thought at first I thought it was a whale and I kept kidding my boy that it was coming after him I turned on my sounder that usually scares whales away but not this thing it kept coming and coming it was a horrible thing I tell you if there's a devil that was it so pretty crazy stuff um, as far as his encounter again it notes the fact that this thing uh, whatever this thing is most sea life would again run away when it comes to any encounters with a large human sized boat but nope uh, not this thing it just kept coming straight for them um, there was one more encounter but it wasn't much to talk about but this happened a few years later it was on May 4th 1997 there were two fishermen a uh, guy by the name of Charles Bungay and another one by the name of C his initial C last name Clark and they said um, that they were fishing out of a place called Fortune Bay and they thought they saw something in the water which looks like some floating garbage bags of some sort and so apparently trying to be I guess um, conscious of the environment they thought that they could would, they would pick up these garbage bags and then take them to shore so that way they could throw them away so that way they didn't stay in the sea there and potentially cause damage to some of the fish or some of the other environments but lo and behold to their great surprise when they approach these garbage bags that's when they they realized that these garbage bags were actually something else altogether uh, because the way they said was whatever this thing was it reared up and that was uh, reared up its head to look straight at them it, they said it turned its head and looked right at us all we could see was a neck six feet long a head like a horse he just looked at us and then slid under the water and disappeared so it goes to show that maybe with these barnacles that this creature has on its neck um, and again being able to probably lay on the bottom of the sea um, it probably collects some of the inadvertent garbage that people throw away uh, right there at the bottom and so when that happens it clings on to the barnacles and then that's when it's floating let's say at the top of the lake itself it looks like garbage bags so that's the last encounter that people have had with this thing nothing else thereafter Nothing that I read in terms of anything happening in the years 2000 or above, so that's about it so far.
So what do you guys think? The Cape Sable Serpent. Some really rich encounters. Some great eyewitness accounts as to what this thing is. Um, if anyone has heard anything else more with regards to this monster, whatever it is, uh, please post in the comments. It would be great to hear. If anyone is there around that area, Cape Sable Island, and has heard more um, information about it, anything at all, that would be great to hear as well. So, Alright everybody, thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.